I began the conversation by asking him and Howard why so many American companies who come here, uh, it fails uh, all too often, uh, but at least for Starbucks right now, uh, they've made it work. We've been here 18 years, and many people don't realize for the first nine years, we were not very successful. And so there was a lot of pressure on us early on to kind of close the tent and say it's not going to work. Uh, so, but I think we had to have patience and we had to have a deep commitment to being locally relevant and understanding the consumer. But I, I, I don't want to embarrass Jack, but you, you also have to have friends here who can help you kind of navigate through some of the issues that uh, are difficult to understand. And, you know, Jack and I have known each other. I, I, I said this the other day. I knew Jack before he was Jack. <laughs> and, and, you know, we've had great conversations about the values of building a great company, whether you're building it in the U.S. or China. And I think the understanding that there are actually more similarities between us than differences. And the consumer, although it is a Chinese consumer that did not know much about coffee, did understand customer service, did understand a beautiful place to be. And I think also building the kind of company that would be values-based and the culture of the company in which we put people first. And I think that, that gave us a leg up. That we, we didn't come here to take anything. We came here to give back. When you look at this, and a lot of uh, technology companies in the U.S. have tried to come here unsuccessfully, what do you think has gone on? I think uh, most of the technology companies come to China to learn from Starbucks. First, a heart for the customer, for the market. We love the people, love the market. Second, you should have a great team. They have a patience. And third is a patience. I'm doing this for 10, 20 years. And that's a great product. When I, I, I was amazed by Starbucks because Chinese people don't drink coffee. We drink tea. I don't like coffee. I like tea, but I like you're Starbucks. Drinking, you're drinking coffee. Coming yeah. here, I respect. I like. I, as I told my wife, I don't like coffee, but I like Starbucks. Because one of the reason is that I met him first time. I think we discussed long, I listened to his talk, and we discussed only about the value, vision, mission. And then I told my team in the past years, a lot of times, making Starbucks a unique example. Everybody drink coffee in the, in the, in the world, right? Also right. China especially. But nobody thought of coffee could be a business that be a global company. Serve people with heart, not coffee. That's what we think. Tell me what's going on in retail here in China. Uh, you just had your singles day, uh, yep. biggest ever, again, $25 billion day. Yep. I, and, and that's been mostly an online uh, yep. day. Yep. Uh, but you guys are getting into the bricks and mortar space yep. as well. Yeah, we've been moving very aggressively. In the four, four years ago, when we grow so fast, and we got a lot of complaints about traditional retail. They say, hey, e-commerce take away all of our jobs, uh, all of our business. So we ask ourselves, are we want to serve our customers or are we want to kill all the retail, the traditional retail? We think we should work in together. We believe online and offline should work in together. With the data, with the customer experience, we think retail, the traditional retail has a huge potential if we do properly, if we work together. So that is why we're going aggressively in the past four years. He just gave up on, on online retail, at least doing it himself. He's, he's handed it over to some degree to Amazon, and Amazon just came to China. Uh -huh. What do you make of that? Amazon come to China? They've been here for almost 15, 20 years. But you do not see them here anywhere. Because? Because I don't think they do properly here. Because it's, out, it's the market you should need. But maybe 10 years later, Amazon become big again, I mean, China. But you should have a patience, a good, great people, good services. And I think we're working together online. And uh, Starbucks has, uh, uh, presents a shop, shop on, on Tmall. And they also are using Alipay. We're working so closely. So, the, you know, the, the grocery officially opens tomorrow. I'll give you a statistic they gave me an hour ago. We sold almost $2 million of merchandise and coffee through Alibaba in the last 48 hours. The store hasn't opened yet. It's incredible. Uh, and the other thing is you, you understand that the technology in the store 
uh, is being powered by Alibaba. So the partnership that we're establishing here in China is just in its early stages of what we can do together. Yeah. How do you think about uh, U.S. and China relations these days and how it relates to you doing business here and you doing business in the U.S.? We have two leaders, but one of whom talks about America first uh, and President Xi to some extent, maybe talking about China first, though opening as well. I did not see President Xi say China first. <laughs> President Xi think, thinks a lot about the one road and one belt, and uh, business should be grow together, share profit together. So, do you? But do you look at what's happening, even in the conversations and, and the overhang of the conversation around North Korea, for example, and how that could affect you being here and and you doing more? I know you're trying to do more and more business in the U.S. as well. I, you know, I think Andrew. Uh, unfortunately, because of the political issues that exist, I think there's a possibility that companies that have a shared level of values around a sense of humanity. So if you can take Alibaba and you take Starbucks, a Chinese company and an American company, perhaps we can demonstrate the kind of cooperation, the kind of trust, and build a bridge between our two companies that perhaps the politicians cannot do at this time and demonstrate to America and to China that we are much more the same than we are different. Okay. And, we've, and we've talked about that. Can you do that, though, if, I, uh, if, if there is uh, disagreement among the countries over things like North Korea? Yes, of course we'll continue to do it. I think uh, politicians agree great. If do not agree, business still have to go on, trade have to go on. Nobody can stop a business. Nobody can stop trade. Nobody can stop the cooperation between the business. So this is what we think. And if they are so great on the offline, we're so good on online, they are so good in the States, we're so good in China. We, we should set an example that how we can work in together, that improving the relationship between right. together, strengthen the relation. This is what we think. By working together, the two countries can do a lot. Do you have a take on, on, on North Korea? I know you're sponsoring, by the way, the Olympics this year. I'm going to be in South Korea. You're going to be there as well and it's going to be a big conversation uh, there what's happening in north korea yeah it's too complicated to me i have enough headache in my business i think when i hear about north korea i say oh my god north korea said this uh, russia said this uh, china said this americans said this leave this job from president xi and donald trump then i'm focusing on my business okay let me ask you one question last time i saw you in davos yeah. you said something very provocative yeah. uh president trump had talked at one point about uh, the U.S., or rather China, stealing jobs from the U.S. And you said that was the strategy. Um, by, that was the strategy by the leaders of the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, President Trump has tried to change that. Mm -hmm. I'm curious whether you think he's been successful. We have tax policy that he's trying to put through. What do, what do you make of what's happening in the United States? Well, I think the Americans also should have a patience. You know, you may do, do not agree with him. When he say, I want to do this, he's been president for that, only one year or something. He can never get achieve something within one year. At least he's trying. And for me, I think the uh, the China is not stealing jobs. We are creating a lot of jobs. A lot of companies succeed in the, in the, in China. Starbucks did excellent in right. China. You know, Microsoft did excellent in China. Uh, IBM did excellent in China. In China, and we do not see a lot of Chinese companies did excellent in the States. So we should work in together. Right. Um, when you have conversations with government here. How much do they talk about Trump with you? There's a constant theme about asking about the president. And I, have, I have one uh, statement that I consistently repeat, and that is, I, I'm not here to talk about politics, <laughs> and I'm certainly not going to criticize the president of the United States on foreign soil. Fair enough. Uh, back there, when you buy a coffee, yeah. uh, you can pay with Alipay, yeah. but you can also pay with WeChat, uh, which yeah. has been growing uh, in its market share. Yeah. Um, what are you going to do to stop that? Why should I stop them? I mean, it, first, if there is only one Alipay, Ali, uh, Alipay cannot grow that fast. When there's fair competition, grow fast. No matter how fast do they grow, we're still bigger, we're still better. So it's, it's when you have a fair, healthy competition, it is good. And we don't want to be lonely to talk to the government because we are the only one. But when we have a two or maybe three, then we have the right policy. Um, talking about uh, currency, the topic, at least back in the U.S., I think here as well, is Bitcoin. And uh, what some people think of as the modern, uh, sort of like a tulip bubble, or is it a bubble? And I was curious, I don't know if you're going to accept Bitcoin, 
Do either of you have a take on whether we're in a bubble? Other people have called it a, a fraud. Uh, Jamie Dimon says it's, it's a ridiculous thing. I, I don't understand it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out the coffee business. I have the same. Just two days ago in the Wuzheng Internet Conference, people ask me, what do you think about it? I say, honestly, I know very little about it. And I, I'm totally confused. And like, even if it works, even if it works, the whole international rules and laws on trade and financing is going to completely change. I don't think we are ready for that. So I think I'm focusing on the Alipay. I'm right. focusing on IMB, US dollars, or Euros. That's but fair. But not Bitcoin. Enough. And you're not, not, not now. yet. I know. No. Do you, do you see me. a day where you could? No. Uh, we, we have a team specifically study that. And also we have, we have a team blockchain technology. We, we spend a lot of efforts on blockchain technology for development. But Bitcoins, I say, not for me. Uh, I, I know. I don't know. I can see a point in time where Starbucks becomes a cashless retail. Right. And I think uh, that time is nearer than uh, Final. Let me say one thing. We are not focusing on Bitcoin. We are focused on cashless society for China and every country we go. Try to making sure the society is more efficient, more transparent, no corruption. This is what we want to do using cashless. Okay, I got two final questions, and I'm going to embarrass you with one of them. There's a lot of speculation in the United States that this gentleman may one day uh, run for president or should run for president. What do you think of that? I think he should. Yeah, be careful here. <laughs> I respect him a lot, and he has a great value, vision, and he's very paranoid for the future. He always think about how he can change. See this thing. Very, I see so many retail complain about new technology. And uh, they hate technology. They stop. They just complain. But he is changing. And I think this is what a country leader should have. Uh, and final question. We've been watching you uh, dancing like Michael Jackson, uh, creating movies. What is, what's next? Uh, outside of uh, doing magic shows? Yeah. Outside of... Uh, running Alibaba? Well, I, uh, every year I try to do something because there are three Jack Ma. First Jack Ma is people's imagination. Ah, he's great, he's not good. I mean, this is the people's imagination. Second Jack Ma, Jack Ma is the CEO and the founder, of, chairman of Alibaba Group. And third Jack Ma is my real person. I love to sing, I love to dance, I have a fun, I like walking around the streets. And all the things you see, I'm myself my my real Jack Ma coming out these days. Can, I get, a, can I get a fourth Jack Ma? Yeah. <laughs> I've known Jack a long time, and Jack obviously has become extraordinarily successful and influential in China and around the world. But the fourth Jack Ma, the core Jack Ma, is the man of humility, a humble person. And that's why I think I have so much respect for him. He has not changed at all. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.